Frozen Tundra Football League. And let's be clear to anyone who might have just happened into the longest running weekly episodic fantasy football update show going. That's right, folks. It is the FTFL weekly update. I am your host, Brett Sieber, owner of the Hulkamaniacs and just an overall good guy, at least according to, well, people that I know, hopefully to some of you as well. Now, week two is in the books. In the past, I could have said, well, we were more than a seventh of the way through the season. This year, we have 14 games. So we are exactly, for all the math nerds out there, two of 14 reduces down into, wait for it, math teacher from Browerville, can you shout it? I can hear you. Wait, you don't know the answer? That doesn't surprise me. It's one seventh. It's one seventh of the season that's come and gone. Now, Week two saw the second consecutive week of North versus South. And for the second consecutive week, the South wins three to two. Now, the North has been well represented by one individual who last year tallied three total victories. Well, this week, he notched his second in this very young season. Mixing cocktails are on a, well, not so much a tear, but their good start continues this week. Um, now, someone who didn't start off hot, who had lost to the same team in consecutive weeks, week one and the final week of the playoffs last year. So I'm talking to you, Mr. Architect. I guess the third time was finally the charm. However, I didn't really do my part to give you any sort of resistance. I guess more on that later. Two weeks in and the trades are a uh, humming. Hulkamaniacs back in the pool for another lap. Traded away Kenyon Drake in their sixth round pick for the 2022 draft for Noah Fant and Mixon Cocktails. 12th round pick. Of course, Mixon Cocktails have, is it Rob Gronkowski? No, it's Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey felt Noah Fant was expendable. I've got a couple running backs. That's right. If you keep a track at home, I do not have a first and I do not have a sixth. And I don't care because this year is going to be different. Speaking of different, a trade came across just this afternoon. And, and a team that we don't often see involved in trades, Eric, traded with Jeff. Now, I don't know who initiated this talk, but I am still kind of stunned that King Henry who last year was acquired by Jeff Markster for, I believe, a third, maybe a first. I don't remember. There were a couple picks. Now, King Henry took Jeff to these fourth FTFL title, but he's out the door. That in his sixth-round pick, coming back to Jeff from Eric DeAndre Hopkins and a second um, interesting swap. Two of the top five running backs have been traded. Two of the top, arguably three running backs, four running backs have been traded already in this very young season. I guess just like the NFL, you feel like you can put whomever in there and keep chugging along. Um, for Sid, eh, still the merry-go-round continues. For Markster, he's got some other viable options. So I think this trade made sense for both of them. Um, all right, before we get to the games, we are also going to unveil a new segment for this year called the unluckiest team in the league or just this week's most unlucky team um that's coming up later in the show but for now to the games here we go mixing cocktails coming in at one and oh taking on the pack attack the only undefeated game of the week and after this really this week only two undefeated teams remain mixing cocktails one and oh pack attack one and oh uh, no more 130 and a half for Andy, 99 and a half for Eric. Of course, Eric goes into Monday night with the lead and then watches his beloved Packers win the game 
But Aaron Jones, free Aaron Jones, run the ball, Packers. Crime and he saves four touchdowns, however, three via the air for Aaron Jones. He leads the way for Andy with 33 points. Tyler Lockett's big start continues. 24 for him. Travis Kelsey, 19 and a half. Mike Evans, pair of touchdowns after, of course, being shut out in week one. 18 and a half. In his starting lineup, Dak Prescott, four points. Four. Dallas looked abysmal. On Andy's bench, no fears. Lamar Jackson. Now, if you remember a couple years ago, Andy won the whole league with one Lamar Jackson. 32 points on the bench. Andy said he was going to ride Prescott all the way to the end. I don't know what he's going to do now, but for, really, that's a great problem to have because he is 2-0 for Eric. Cooper Cup continues to be on a tear. Seems to be Matt Stafford's favorite receiver. Marks are Robert Woods. Maybe that was part of the impetus to trade for DeAndre Hopkins because Robert Woods has been a forgotten man in L.A. Uh, Russell, stupid face. Wilson only mustered 26 points. Probably why Eric lost because Russell is stupid. Um, Tampa Bay's defense is 19 Second week in a row, Eric's running backs struggle. Gaskin and C Clyde Edwards Hilaire combined for six. Last week they combined for 12. If I'm doing my, you know, patterny type math, again, math teacher on Broadville, I'm waiting, I'm listening. It says leave your message after the beep. Okay, I'll tell you. Anyways, uh, next week there will be zero if we're going to continue in that path. I'm sure Eric hopes that's not the case. Gone is the zero from his losing side of the ledger. Next up, Mana. Four-time Lucky Pants, Stevens, Champ, Mana, 0-1, taking on the the brother-in-laws, Valhalla, Valhalla, who the hell cares how you say it, Vandals at 1-0. Peter, of course, impressed big time in week one. Not so much in week two. Jeff, 121.5 to Peter's 83.5. If you are Jeff, King Henry, who has now been shipped out of town. 39 points. Jeff, let me tell you what you just got rid of. I mean, I think you know what you just got rid of. And, of course, strike while the iron's hot. I suppose you, you buy low, you sell high. Speaking of high, that's King Henry's highest total in the past two-plus seasons. He tore it up. 39 points in Buffalo's defense. Another defense who brought it this week. 20 points. Chris Carson, 14. Nick Chubb, 12 and a half. Again, there's those running backs Jeff has. Um, you know, letting Henry go. He still has some depth there. Only three of Jeff's players were in single digits. Um, so it really... Jeff had himself a stellar week. If you're Peter, Patrick Mahomes again, 32 points. You know you're going to get that performance or close to it most weeks. Uh, Gronk, 16. Daryl Henderson, 11 and a half. Got a little bit of a rib injury this week. Will he be playing or will he not? Maybe Peter could start Henderson's uh, handcuff. Oh, wait, he doesn't have them. Uh, I do. That's Sony Michelle. Uh, Peter had four players at less than three and a half points. Woo! That is pretty terrible stuff. One of the players on his bench, George Kittle. Greg Kittle, George Kittle. Kittle. I forget his first name. It's late. And listen, it's been a long week. Um, two points. Now, Kittle was a high second round draft pick. Remember last year, I took Kittle in the first round. And of course, he got hurt and did nothing. San Fran is really struggling. They got a lot of people hurt. Kittle is not one of them. Yet, they seem to be unable to get him the football. Peter, of course, would love that to change, to change the tide next week, to get back in the win column. But for now, he is one and one. Next game, Hulkamaniacs coming in at 1-0, taking on the Architect at 0-1 for the third consecutive time. I was going for the hat trick, the trifecta, the tater tot tower times three. I don't even know what that means. Regardless, feeling pretty good. Now, week one, my team underperformed and still won. This week, again, underperformed and couldn't get it done. Matt, 95 and a half. I got 69. If you're Matt, Terry McLaurin started off the week hot Thursday night, 17 and a half points. DJ Moore, Jimmy Garoppolo both chipped in 14. Ezekiel Elliott, 13. But what is Elliott's role with the rapidly emerging Tony Pollard, who seems far more hungry than Big Zeke, who got his cash a couple years ago? Interesting development could take place there. Matt only had three in signals, so everyone on his team contributed. Uh, my team, not so much. Aaron Rodgers, welcome back, 28 points. Um, why? Hmm. Harns? Harris? Who? Oh. Boy, having a real mental moment here. What the heck? Ten and a half points. Harris. 
My running. Oh, Damian Harris. <laughs> I told you, folks, it's been a long week. I didn't even film last night because I had so much going on. Damian Harris got a touchdown, 10 and a half points. Those are the only two in doubles. Uh, Alvin Kamara got absolutely stuffed, four points. Uh, Jason Sanders, zero. And more on that in just a moment because, my friends, it is time for the brand new segment. We're going to do it. I know we talk about it, I've talked about it a ton, that really fantasy football is not at all about skill. It is far more and pretty much certainly 100% about luck. So I bring you this week's Most Unlucky Team. All right, now there's, there has been a lot of chatter as of late about how unlucky uh, one particular owner feels coming into the season. And I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen to make you unlucky. I mean, now you could have a player get injured. Um, you could have a high pick underperform. You could play against the highest scoring team a couple weeks in a row. Um, you could have, you know, coming into the season, a keeper who was injured. Now, some of these things have happened before and are happening currently right now. Point in case, keepers being injured. Eric kept Peyton Manning for an entire season while he stayed on the bench. Deesom kept Andrew Luck on the bench for the entire year because he was hurt and he still won the title. Now, now, now you're going, right, right, right. But what about the most unluckies of luckies when you just, you score high, but you play against a team that only other team has scored higher in the league? And that happens. And it happened. Not last year, but it happened in 2019 where one team played against the top two or three scoring teams in the league in weeks one or two. It happened that way in 2018. It happened that way in 2017. You play against teams who score points. I mean, that's as John Madden as I can explain this to you. Uh, and sometimes they score a lot. That's just the way it goes. But something happened last week that didn't happen at all last year and only happened once the year prior. Technically twice. However, it was in week one and it cost somebody $5 because it was an incomplete lineup. Nay, it was actually someone that had been played who was injured, who was out. If you remember correctly, that was Matt, and the player in question was his kicker, thus logging him a zero. Only one other time did it happen, week 13 of 2019. Didn't happen at all last year, but it happened this week. I give to you, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, the most unlucky team in the league this week. Mine! And, and I've been telling you for years that I'm just the most unlucky player in our league. But this week in particular, Jason Sanders, zero points. Now, had he gotten 10, I still would have lost. But when your kicker gets zero, I mean, good Lord. I've heard people complain and crap about how kickers get too many points. I don't want to hear about it anymore because my kicker this week got a big, fat goose egg. Gone is Jay Sanders. Not that I don't like Jay Sanders. And some people, take a look at his picture. I think him and I have a lot in common in the looks department. What a lucky guy he is. But that offense, woo, tough. Without Tua, ah, going to be even more tough. Jason Sanders, you're out. Matt Prater and your big fat leg, you are in. You know what? It's just one week. I'm one and one. I was really upset about it. But hey, what can you do? It's all just luck. All right, one team that hasn't necessarily been lucky is the Radioactive Monkeys coming up on our next game, coming in at 1-0, taking on the Liquid Schwartz, the team who I know we've heard so much about as far as the unlucky one, and more so, I really think there's something to Peter's idea of creating the Super Sport Award given to the player who references last year the most throughout the, throughout the season. Maybe I'll start keeping track of that. Um, what I am keeping track of is Swartz losses. It's now 2-0-2. Two. Oh two, he falls to Saltmarsh 109-89. to If you're Saltmarsh, Stupid Face Jr. Kyler Murray torched the Vikings for 38 points. Patriots, another stellar defensive performance, 19. Uh, Daniel Carlson, a kicker who scored way more than zero, had 17. Brandon Cooks, 14.5. Uh, Miles Sanders, J J Michael Hasty both had 6.5. He had zip on the bench. Didn't need it because the starting lineup produced. Uh, if you are Swart, Josh Allen, 16 points. Tyler Hawkinson, the only thing going in Detroit, 14 points. Calvin Ridley, 13 and a half. Najee Harris, a nice bounce back week, 12 and a half points. Um, we've heard him talk a lot about his keepers. We've heard him talk a lot about his, you know, how many points he's scoring. Uh, so just, just so you know, as I look ahead here, ooh, Mana, four-time lucky pants, Stephen Champ, Mana, uh, you get him. So Adam Swart. I'm sure Jeff will run up the score on you as well. And lastly, but boy, oh boy, certainly not leastly, we broke a record this week. 
Well, we didn't. John did. In the modern era, since we went to half point PPR and a flex, no one has scored fewer than John's 41 points from last year. He set the bar really low last year. Thought we weren't going to see much lower than that. And then John told his past self, hold my whiskey sour. And he went and dropped a couple and a half points off of that. Um, Kramerica, not a great week, but a great week to play John. 90 points for Sid, 38 and a half points for John. If you're Sid, Stafford had 16. Justin Jefferson got into the end zone, 13. Austin Eckler, 12 and a half. Chris Godwin, 12 points. If you're John, Jameis Winston had eight points. And I didn't write anything else down because there isn't anything, anything else to say. A surefire early front runner for the DSM, and especially if we tack on it, I know it's tough to like add year after year. Now, granted, I've gotten the award for ineptitude over three different seasons. To best yourself in a consecutive years and how low can you do your own limbo contest, if you will, uh, that is saying something. All right, well, that wraps up the game. So let's hit the stud, the dud, and the decent before we announce next week's games and we get you out of here. Stud of the week, King Henry 39 and Stupid Face Junior Kyler Murray 38, both in winning well, winning fashion for their team. Uh, if you saw Mars 2-0 and and that Arizona offense looks hot. Can they keep it up? I guess time will tell. Dud of the week, uh, back to Kittle. George, George Kittle, George. Uh, round two, pick number three, eight points on the season. I've often said you can't win the fantasy draft in those early rounds, but you sure as heck can lose it. We'll see how that plays out for Peter. Uh, Swart, this week, why you should be the decent award winner. Uh, uh, you know what? Two weeks in a row. I don't have anything. Lucky you. Uh, but really, it was all about John. 38 and a half points, uh, two and a half points lower than his 41 from last year. <sighs> Simply stunning. Um, and that's it. Let's talk about the games for next week. The Mixing Cocktails coming in at 2-0, and taking on Team Linkowitz at 0-2. And Andy wins, and his lead over John in the division is three games, just three games into the season. <sighs> Zooey mama. That would sting. Mana, four-time Lucky Pants, Stephen Champ Mana, coming in at 1-1, taking on Liquid Shorts at 0-2. I'm predicting Jeff to put up at least 140. Uh, the Monkeys coming in at 2-0, taking on the Valhalla Vandals at 1-1. Hulkamaniacs 1-1 as well, taking on Cremerica. Sorry, make Cremerica great again at 1-1. And, and the Pack Attack taking on the Architect, both teams 1-1. One one. Now, before I go, Ryan Deesom. Yep, he's a quitter when it comes to fantasy football. However, when it comes to everything else he's doing, not a chance. Ryan Deason continues to be crushing it on the front line in a pandemic that is not over, still very real, and in a lot of ways has gotten worse for people like Ryan Deason. Please, please do your part. Do what you can. Not for you, but for folks like Ryan Deesom, and really for any and all the folks you'll probably never, ever meet. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. We're looking forward to week three. This season is just starting to gain some traction, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Until next time, peace! Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I know. I get it. I, I, right. Well, thanks. Thanks. Thanks for turning my words around on me and telling me this is all about luck. Listen, listen. I asked you for help this year because you seem to have the magic bullet when it comes to this kind of stuff. And and so, wait, you're going to be gone. 12 days? A, a, a music festival? Come on. Now, you know, listen. You know, okay. Oh, that's just one. That's just one of the things. Okay. Well, I, I guess, I mean, as long as you can text. Um, oh, hey, wait, 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 wait. Did you think more about Ease's pain? Okay. Yeah, 2003. You think it has to do with that? I mean, I can look at the roster. All right. Well, you know what? I better win this week. I need this. All right, fine. We'll see you later.